Well, hello everybody, it's Taxi88 here, and now I'm actually, this is probably the, this is probably the close I've had thus far to getting a, requ a request for, a, for looking into a, a retro game. Uh, fellow YouTuber Stefano Pavone actually, uh, actually recommended uh, the MSX version of Back to the Future after he'd watched my Synchro ZX Spectrum review uh, recently. So here we have Back to the Future for the MSX. And so... So what we have is, apparently that's supposed to be Marty. It doesn't really look anything like him. Bear in mind, this game was only released in Japan from what I can make out. Okay, I just got hit by a yellow bird. So what you've got to do is, is jump up at windows of houses and the like and see if you can find George and Lorraine and then... And then once you've got both of them, uh, then you guide them to the uh, to the dance hall by heading to heading to the right. And I'm really not liking these controls. The way the ju the jumping mechanic is ridiculous. I mean, if you jump straight up, you cannot you cannot suddenly um, press left or right in midair, which is quite often a tradition of uh, of uh, of jumping in video games, which. What is with those birds? I mean, do you remember any scene in the film in which Marty got dive-bombed by yellow birds? And talk, talk about it, who are those guys meant to be? They look like police officers, but if, they, if that is what they are, at what point in the film did Marty get to uh, um, have to cope with, with the rampaging police officers? And, and also notice that sprites are a bit flickery. Oh dear. And also, also if you jump, as you can see, you can jump to jump left and jump right, but you can't actually change direction mid-jump again, which is which does take some getting used to. Oh God. And this really doesn't look like Hill Valley either. Oh, those birds! And I've managed to get George and Lorraine to the dance. And another question. Why is Lorraine pink? And more importantly, why is George green? I mean, it's George McFly, not the Incredible Hulk. Oh, these controls really suck. Come on, get out of the house, Lorraine. Oh, this... The controls really aren't very good. One more go. I've only just at this moment noticed that time limit in the bottom of the screen. The music's doing an, I suppose, a pretty adequate rendition of Johnny Be Good, which I suppose makes some semblance of sense because that's the song that's one of the songs that Marty played whilst in the whilst in the in the dance in the film. Right. Oh, God. Those sprites really don't look very good. I mean, Marty's actually the only... Marty's the only decently designed sprite in the whole game, and even that doesn't look much like him. I'm... Oh, dear God, this is silly. Why is George green? Is he is he violently sick or something? Or is he secretly the Incredible Hulk? Oh, oh God, I, I can't take this anymore. I, I just can't stand the game's controls. That jumping mechanic really doesn't work. 
So verdict time. Graphics. I know this is an MSX, and I know that back uh, back in the MSX's heyday, the memory for computers and the like was extremely limited and very expensive. But even allowing for that, these graph this graphical style really doesn't suit the game. I mean that that really doesn't look anything like Marty McFly. I mean even the Oh dear. And and why is the why is Sir Marty the only solid sprite in this? The other the other character are these strange police officer blokes and and even Lorraine and George seem to be see through. See look, you can see right through right through George and Lorraine in this demo mode as if they as if they were ghosts. And it's this, there is, there's very little, there, there's s s sort of sound, there's the Johnny B. Good music playing in the background. And, and the occasional sound effect here and there, not really much to write. A fairly good rendition, Johnny B. Good, but other than that, not really much to write home about. Gameplay though, that's that's not very enjoyable really. It's it's not as boring as the um, as the Spectrum version of Back to the Future that I reviewed the other day, but that's not really saying much. The jumping mechanics that I mentioned take are really hard to adjust to. I mean, in tradition, tr um, traditionally in when when you have games which you jump, which more often than not are platform games, you can actually uh, ch you can actually change direction mid jump. I know that's not realistic, realistic, but it is a, a pretty much an accepted tradition of games that's been in existence for God knows how long. But when you when you jump directly upwards and then find you can't make slight adjustments to your even slight adjustments to your jump to um, perhaps help you get in front of a window to open it and see if George and or Lo if George or Lorraine is there, then it's a bit fiddly and or or even to adjust yourself so you're less likely to land straight into the path of one of those oncoming police officers or even those birds and th this re this looks like some kind of of outskirts of a of a little village rather than um, rather than any anything in Hill Valley. I mean, couldn't they have, uh, couldn't they have had uh, sh shops and things? Um, yeah, I, you know, I just, this game just doesn't really do anything for me, I'm sorry. So what am I gonna rate it? I think four out of 10. It may it may be slightly more enjoyable to play than that Spectrum version I uh, reviewed, but it's not really all that faithful to the film. And this, what you do, what you do is in finding George and Lorraine and getting to the dance. That is literally all you do in the game. So, not a huge amount in the way of variety either. So. Four out of ten for Back to the Future on the MSX. So, hope you all enjoyed this review. Taxi 88, out.